When Jesus rolled into Jerusalem at the beginning of the Passover celebrations, his disciples were even more excited than the crowds. They had longed for the day when Jesus would be openly owned as king. Perhaps at last that day was near. But Jesus kept patiently warning them that he was not going to be that kind of earthly king. At first, he would rule only in the hearts of his followers. Soon, he would be arrested and killed. After that, he would come alive again forever, and his kingdom would spread through the whole world. Most of his disciples still didn't grasp what Jesus meant, but Judas Iscariot began to understand only too well. He was an ambitious man, and he loved money. He, more than any of them, had looked forward to the day when, as one of King Jesus' right-hand men, he would have power and wealth. But Judas realised that Jesus was not the type of king he thought he was. He knew that the temple leaders and the high priests wanted to arrest Jesus, and they needed someone on the inside to help them, to show them where Jesus would be when no crowds were present. So Judas made his way to the temple, where he knew he would find the council members and priests. How much money will you give me if I tell you where and when you can catch the man you want? he asked. Someone pulled out a bag of money and carefully counted out the silver coins. There you are, Judas, he said. Thirty of them. You can have them now. Let us know as soon as possible where to find your master. Judas walked off, his thoughts in a whirl. From now on he must watch carefully for the best way to keep his side of the bargain with his new masters. Passover week was slipping away. It was now time to begin preparing the Passover meal. Long ago, God had rescued the people of Israel from death and led them out from Egypt into a land of their own. They had kept the first Passover then, and Moses had given clear instructions about what they should eat, how they should cook it, both for that day and for the many annual Passover celebrations to follow. Jesus planned to share his last Passover meal with his close disciples. Go and get the Passover meal ready, he told Peter and John. Where shall we prepare it? they asked. Jerusalem was packed and none of them had a house of their own in the city. But many friends of Jesus were glad to lend him whatever they possessed, just as the man with the donkey had done. Jesus had already made arrangements with one of these friends. Go into the city, he told Peter and John. Follow a man carrying a water jar. When he goes into a house, go after him. Jesus went on, ask him to show you the room that he has promised to lend us. It will be a big upstairs room. Get our meal ready there. Jesus knew that his enemies were looking for him. It was important that he should have a safe, private space where he could enjoy this last supper with his friends. He still had many things to tell them before he was taken away from them. The day for the Passover supper had come. Jesus arrived with his disciples at the upstairs room in the Jerusalem house. Everyone was hot and dusty after trudging through the busy streets. As the disciples argued and grumbled and laughed among themselves, Jesus looked at them with great affection. He knew them through and through, with all their faults, and he loved them dearly. He knew that even now, Judas was looking for an opportunity to betray him to his enemies, but Jesus loved him still. The disciples looked around, but couldn't see a servant to wash the dust and sweat from their feet after they'd been walking in the dusty roads in open sandals. A pitcher of water and a towel lay ready, and Jesus stood up. He poured some water into the bowl and picked up the towel himself. He went from one disciple to the next, washing their feet in turn. They felt very ashamed. When Jesus at last sat down, he said, Do you understand what I've been trying to tell you? You call me your master and Lord, and you are right, that's what I am. Yet I'm willing to do anything for you, even to wash your feet, because I love you. I want you to follow my example. Care for each other and love one another as I love and care for you. Don't always be thinking of yourselves and your own importance. 
The disciples had been excited about celebrating the Passover supper. But now they began to feel more serious. They could see that Jesus was very sad. One of you is going to betray me to my enemies, he told them. They were horrified. You don't mean me, Lord, do you? Each one asked in turn. Judas Iscariot realised that Jesus knew about his treachery. But Jesus didn't openly accuse him. Instead, he tried to offer him friendship and forgiveness. He handed Judas the best and tastiest helping of food. But Judas's face remained hard and set. He would not go back on his bargain with the council. Besides, he now had the information that they wanted. Jesus looked at him with great sadness. Then he said, Be quick and get on with what you are going to do. The rest of the disciples didn't understand what Jesus meant. They thought he was giving Judas instructions to take some money to the poor. Without a word, Judas slipped from the room and went out into the darkness of the night. As they went on eating the meal, Jesus spoke to his disciples. He took the loaf of bread, broke it and shared it among his disciples. All of you eat this, he told them. This bread stands for my body, which is going to be given for you all. Then Jesus took a cup of wine and handed it to them. Drink this, he said. This wine stands for my lifeblood, which is going to be given for many. My blood will be the seal of God's new covenant, his promise, which he's going to make with the people of every nation. The disciples ate and drank as Jesus told them. They didn't understand then what his words and his actions meant, but soon they would understand better. His death was part of God's great plan to save mankind. Jesus was willingly giving his own life so that people everywhere could have God's forgiveness and receive new life through him. After supper was over, Jesus talked to his disciples for a long time. He wanted to prepare them for what was going to happen that very night, but they were slow to understand what he said. You are all going to run away and leave me, he told them. Never, Peter exclaimed. I don't know about the others, but I'll never do such a thing. I'm willing to die with you if need be. So are we, the others all agreed. Jesus shook his head. Peter, he said, before the cock crows for tomorrow's dawn, you will have said three times over that you don't know me. I'd never do such a thing, Peter insisted. None of you must be worried or upset when it looks as though everything has gone wrong, Jesus went on. You must trust me and believe in me, just as you do in God. I'm going to leave you, but after I've risen from death, we shall meet and talk again once more in the fields of Galilee that we all know so well. I shall be there waiting for you. And when at last I go back to my father, I promise that I won't leave you on your own. I'm going to send my Holy Spirit to be your friend and helper. You will not be able to see him, because he doesn't have a human body as I have, but he will stay close to you and give you strength and encouragement. He will help you to remember all the things that I have taught you, and he will give you courage to be loyal to me. I'm going back to my father to make a home ready for you there. One day I shall come for you too. You know where that home is and how to get there. Lord, we haven't any idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Thomas exclaimed. I am the way and the truth and the life, Jesus answered. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Before I leave you, I want to give you a parting present. It's not the kind of peace that you will find in this world. My peace will keep you strong and joyful, however hard life may be. When Jesus had finished talking to them, they all sang the special Passover hymn. Then together, they left the safety of the quiet, friendly room. Judas knew where Jesus and the rest of the disciples would go when supper was over. 
Near to the city on the slopes of the Mount of Olives lay a quiet garden called Gethsemane. Jesus often went there to think and pray. Jesus took Peter and two others with him. Don't go, he whispered to them. Stay close and keep me company. My heart is nearly breaking with sorrow and sadness. Soon Jesus went a little way from them to pray. His friends could see that he was shaken with distress and grief. Please, Father, he prayed. If it's possible, please take this cup away from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. In spite of Jesus' need of them, the three friends were soon so tired they fell asleep. Twice Jesus gently woke them, but when he began to pray again, they dozed off once more. Couldn't you stay awake with me, even for an hour? Jesus asked them sadly. But now you must wake up. The time has come. I'm going to be taken prisoner. Look, here comes the one who has betrayed me to my enemies. As the procession advanced with certain steps towards them, they recognised with horror and disbelief the familiar figure of Judas Iscariot at its head. See that you take the right man. Judas whispered to the guards. He's the one I will greet with a kiss. Judas walked straight towards Jesus. Hello, master, he called out and kissed him. Judas, my friend, why are you here? Jesus asked sadly. Do what you came for, friend. The armed guard seized Jesus as if he were a dangerous criminal. Peter was furious. He pulled out a sword of his own and lashed out wildly, cutting off the ear of one of the high priest's servants. Put your sword away, Peter, Jesus said firmly. If I wished to go free, I could call on armies of angels to fight for me, but I'm ready to give up my life according to God's plan. Then Jesus gently touched the wounded ear and made it whole. The bewildered and terrified disciples could bear no more, their master and leader was going to allow himself to be taken prisoner. That was the end of all their hopes. In panic and despair, they took to their heels and ran. The armed band led their unresisting prisoner away. <laughs>